Welcome to the Isuzu family and to the Isuzu N-Series diesel truck. This driver orientation video will help you keep your N-Series truck on the road and prevent costly downtime. It will introduce you to your truck's diesel emission system and how it operates, diesel particulate filter regeneration, and diesel exhaust fluid maintenance. We'll also take you through a driver's daily pre-trip inspection. Today's modern emission systems have dramatically reduced the amount of particulates and nitrogen oxides in commercial truck diesel emissions. The reliable and clean operation of these diesel engines is made possible by their exhaust after treatment systems. These systems include three key components. The diesel particulate filter, the selective catalyst reduction system, and diesel exhaust fluid. Let's take a look at how the Isuzu after treatment system works. When exhaust leaves the engine, it enters the diesel particulate filter, or DPF. During normal driving, soot accumulates in the DPF's high-tech ceramic filter. As the ceramic filter collects the soot, it will need to burn it off periodically to prevent it from becoming clogged. This process is called regeneration. Regeneration may take place automatically while driving at sustained speed, or the system may require you to perform a selectable or manual regeneration. After the exhaust has passed through the DPF, it enters the Selective Catalyst Reduction System, or SCR, where it is cleaned again. The SCR injects a precise amount of diesel exhaust fluid, or DEF, into the hot exhaust stream. A chemical reaction converts nitrogen oxides in the exhaust into nitrogen and water, two substances that are safer for the environment. The DPF, SCR, and related emission components are critical to the safe and efficient operation of your Isuzu truck, so proper maintenance is important. The DPF must be serviced by an authorized Isuzu dealer every 3,000 hours or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Never move or alter any of your Isuzu's emission system components. The level of particulate matter accumulation in the DPF is displayed on the PM level gauge on the Multi-Information Display, or MID. When the level is high, the DPF will need to be regenerated. The frequency of regeneration will vary depending on the type of driving you do. For example, Regeneration may be required more frequently with extended periods of slow driving or with extended use of a power takeoff. When an automatic regeneration starts, the amber Regeneration in Progress indicator light is displayed on the MID. When this occurs, you can just continue normal driving. If you park during automatic regeneration, you may notice that the engine idle speed increases and the exhaust brake may activate. This is normal. Please allow the vehicle to complete the automatic regeneration before turning the engine off. The regeneration process typically completes in about 20 minutes. The light will go off when the process is complete. During regeneration, exhaust parts and gases become very hot. Do not park under trees or in areas where flammable items such as paper, leaves, or grass could come in contact with hot parts or gases and ignite. White smoke may be produced during DPF regeneration. Do not park in any poorly ventilated indoor place during the regeneration process. If the automatic regeneration process is interrupted or can't be completed, the amber regeneration required light may illuminate. If the amber regeneration required indicator is lit and you cannot complete the automatic regeneration procedure, or if the amber selectable regeneration required light illuminates, you must perform the selectable regeneration procedure. Stop the vehicle in a safe place, away from flammable materials. Put the vehicle in park and pull the parking brake. Allow the engine to idle. Don't press the accelerator pedal and make sure that if your vehicle has a PTO switch, that it is turned off. To begin, press the DPF switch. 
the Regeneration in Progress indicator will appear in the MID and stay on until the process is complete. This normally takes about 20 minutes. Do not leave the vehicle during the regeneration process. Once it is complete, you can resume normal driving. When the Regeneration Required or Selectable Regeneration Required messages in the MID are read, this means the DPF is nearly full of soot and other particulate matter. You should complete regeneration immediately to avoid damaging the DPF and other components. If the regeneration is not completed promptly, the check engine light and reduced engine power light may come on and engine power will be reduced. You should check the DEF level as part of your pre-trip inspection each day. If the fluid level is low, fill the tank with fresh DEF just until it reaches the F position in the level gauge on the front face of the tank. The DEF gauge helps you determine when it's time to add DEF. If the DEF level is low, warning and indicator lights will appear, and engine power will reduce in progressive stages to help prevent damage and encourage you to add DEF. If this occurs, stop as soon as possible and add DEF to avoid severe vehicle speed reduction. The warning and indicator lights will go out automatically and engine power will resume to normal once the SCR system detects sufficient DEF in the tank. Use only API certified DEF. It is available from your Isuzu dealer and from most auto parts stores. Never put diesel fuel or any other substance other than diesel exhaust fluid in the DEF tank. Any substance other than DEF may cause a breakdown of the SCR system. Store DEF between 12 and 86 degrees Fahrenheit. It will keep for approximately one year. If DEF freezes in your DEF tank, it is still usable. Start the truck normally. The SCR system includes a heater that will melt the DEF. To add DEF, be sure the engine is off. With a clean towel, wipe off dust and dirt from around the filler port of the DEF tank, then remove the filler cap. We recommend using a funnel for filling the DEF tank. Wipe it clean before and after each use and be sure it has only been used with DEF to avoid contaminating the system. Place the funnel into the DEF tank, then place the DEF container's nozzle into the funnel and begin filling. Do not overfill the tank past the F position in the level gauge, as this can damage the tank and the SCR system. Make sure to wipe off any DEF that spilled. Tighten the cap after refilling. If you get DEF on your skin, wash it off with soap and water. The exhaust system warning message notifies you of an error in the selective catalyst reduction system. This could be a malfunction or the system may have sensed a low level of DEF or incorrect DEF quality. You'll need to have the system inspected and serviced at your authorized Isuzu dealer right away. When the exhaust system message appears, the SCR system will turn on other indicator lights and limit speed in progressive stages to encourage you to service the truck. You'll find a handy reference guide behind the driver's sun visor to help you interpret emission system indicators and messages. You should also check your truck's owner's manual for more information. A daily pre-trip inspection by the driver is among the most important things you can do to operate your Isuzu truck safely and efficiently. The inspection can help you identify any issues that could affect safety, prevent roadside repairs, towing, and costly downtime, and save your company money by spotting mechanical or operating concerns before they become serious. A daily inspection also helps you avoid costly fines and enforcement actions. The Department of Transportation requires an annual inspection to ensure commercial vehicles are in good working order. They also provide a driver's vehicle inspection report to help you log your daily inspection. It covers all the major components of the vehicle and serves as a record of the truck's condition. So let's get started. Select a safe location to conduct your pre-trip inspection. Park the truck on level ground and away from moving vehicles. Make sure there's plenty of space around the vehicle so you have an open and clear view. 
Always wear a safety vest when working outside your truck to help others see you. And be sure to wear eye protection and a pair of heavy-duty work gloves. With the transmission in park, the engine off, and the key in your pocket, chalk the wheels to be sure the truck won't move while you walk around it. If the truck is part of a fleet, check the VIN to make sure you are recording the inspection for the correct vehicle. Also, make sure that you have the required registration and insurance information for the truck. Begin your inspection with a preliminary walk around the vehicle. From the front, look for signs of leaks or fluids on the ground. Stand in front of the truck and make sure it's not leaning or sagging to either side. Walk all the way around the truck, checking for any visible damage. Now you're ready to get inside. Start by checking the condition of the driver's seat, the seat belt, and the steering wheel. Don't turn the engine on yet. First, check the engine oil level by pressing the oil check switch. The indicator will illuminate green if the oil level is sufficient. If it's red, check the engine oil dipstick before proceeding. Add oil as needed. Verify that the parking brake is engaged. Then start the engine and allow it to idle for about 10 minutes. This allows the fluids to warm and circulate so your readings are accurate. Pay close attention to the warning indicators on the instrument panel to be certain which ones turn off and which stay illuminated. Be sure to address any lights that stay illuminated that may indicate a concern. Turn on the climate control system to heat or cool the cabin and defrost the windows if needed. Then, turn on the headlights, activate the high beams, and turn on the hazard lights. Be sure you see the indicators on the instrument panel and leave the lights on for your exterior inspection. As you exit the vehicle, check that the safety triangle and fire extinguisher are properly stowed in the compartment behind the seats. From the front of the vehicle, verify that the turn signals and headlights are working and check the marker lights on the cab and the body. Inspect the windshield. Is it clean? Are there cracks or chips in it? While you're there, visually inspect the wiper arms and wiper blades. Visibility is key for any drive. Continue around the truck. Check that all the lights are operating, mirrors are secure and clean, and doors, grab handles, and steps are in good condition. At each wheel, look for any wheel damage and make sure the lug nuts are in place and tight. A loose lug nut can cause vibration and compromise handling. Check the pressure of each tire. Check the tread of each tire for irregular wear. And check the sidewall for damage. Front tires tend to wear more quickly, but check all tires for irregular wear. Proper tire inflation is important for handling, safety, fuel economy, and long tire life. So check the tire pressures. The recommended pressures can be found in the owner's manual or in the driver's door jam. Open the passenger door and check the windshield washer fluid level. Refill the tank if necessary. At the rear of the vehicle, check the condition of the mud flaps. All commercial trucks are required to have mud flaps to prevent road debris from damaging other vehicles. If your truck has a bumper, check for any damage to it and the threshold. If the vehicle has a lift gate, lower and raise it to be sure it's operating correctly and then that it's properly stowed. If it has a walk ramp, pull it out to determine if it glides easily or needs lubrication, then return it to its locked position. Check all cargo door openings on the body to be sure that the latches are secure. If there are any locks, make sure you have the correct keys or combinations. You'll also want to determine if the cargo door's hinges or roll-up mechanisms are working smoothly or if they need lubrication. As you return to the front of the vehicle, check to be sure that the caps on the fuel tank and def tank are secure. Now, return to the driver's side to turn off the engine. If you have a standard cab model, make sure all items in the cab are secure before you tilt the cab to inspect the engine compartment. If you have a crew cab model, please refer to your owner's manual for instructions on how to access the engine compartment. For standard cab models, be sure the area in front of the vehicle is clear 
and that there is space to safely tilt the cab. Unlock and tilt the cab. Once the cab is tilted, the cab support arm will lock, and you'll need to insert the safety lock pin to secure it. Be careful when checking the engine and its components, as some of them may be hot. Check the condition of all the belts and visually inspect hoses and surfaces for signs of leaks or cracks. Next, check the oil level by removing the dipstick and wiping it off. Then reinsert it and gently remove it to read the oil level. The correct level should be between the full and min marks. If the level is too low, add oil. Behind the passenger side of the cab is the engine coolant reservoir. It is conveniently placed for a quick visual check. Check the power steering fluid level, making sure the level is between the max and min lines. When you're done, lower the cab and lock it in place. Here's how. Remove the safety lock pin from the cab support and place it in the holder. Hold the assist handle and unlock the cab support by pressing the support lock lever while pulling the support rearward and push the assist handle down firmly to latch. Push down the locking handle to engage the lock hook. Check to make sure the cab is secure. These instructions are also on a decal on the cab. Return to the driver's seat. Place the engine control switch in the on position and make sure the cab tilt warning light is not displayed. You're almost ready to roll. Document the results of your inspection before getting on the road. If you work for a fleet, be sure to alert your management if you've discovered anything that needs attention. Isuzu N-Series diesel trucks can be equipped with an Advanced Driver Assistance System, or ADOS, as an option. The system includes two features, Automatic Emergency Braking System and Lane Departure Warning System. The ADOS consists of a dual camera sensing system that's mounted to the center of the dashboard. The Automatic Emergency Braking System, or AEBS, will automatically apply the truck's brakes if the dual camera sensing system detects a vehicle or pedestrian in front of your truck with which your vehicle could possibly collide. This may help you avoid or limit the severity of a collision. The AEBS is designed to be an aid and does not relieve you of your responsibility to drive with due care and attention. Do not overly rely on the AEBS. When driving, always pay attention to your surroundings and drive safely. The AEBS will activate automatically when you start the vehicle. If you need or want to turn it off, press the AEBS off switch and the AEBS off indicator light will illuminate. Pressing the switch again reactivates the system. When the AEBS first detects obstacles in front of the truck, it will sound a warning and display brake on the MID in red letters on a black background to encourage the driver to apply the brakes. If the system determines that an object is so close that there is a strong possibility of a collision, it will automatically apply the brakes. A warning will also sound and brake will display on the MID in black letters on a red background. The Lane Departure Warning System, or LDWS, alerts the driver when it detects that the vehicle has unintentionally deviated from the lane. The system operates only at speeds of approximately 37 miles per hour and above. The LDWS is designed to support driving within the lanes and is not meant as a substitute for paying attention to the road or keeping your hands on the wheel. You are responsible for controlling your vehicle at all times. Use the LDWS switch to change the sensitivity of the LDWS or to turn it off. Pressing the switch cycles the system from default to less sensitive to off. The LDWS indicators display when the system is turned on to indicate if the system is in the default or less sensitive mode. When the LDWS is off, today's date will appear on the display and the LDWS warning light will be illuminated. In the default mode, the LDWS operates when the vehicle comes close to or contacts the left or right lane markers. In the less sensitive mode, it operates when the vehicle contacts or crosses over the lane markers. 
When the LDWS operates, a warning will sound, and the left or right lane marker warning will flash. If the ADOS detects that the camera cannot see the road ahead, the camera blocked indicator will display on the MID. Check for a dirty windshield or an obstruction in front of the camera. If the camera blocked indicator does not clear, park the vehicle in a safe place, turn it off, and restart it. If restarting the vehicle does not resolve the issue, contact your nearest Isuzu dealer for assistance. The system failure indicator will display on the MID if there is a malfunction in the ADOS. Contact your nearest Isuzu dealer for assistance. Congratulations again on your selection of an Isuzu commercial truck. If you need a refresher on anything covered in this video, remember you can access it online or on your mobile device at isuzucv.com. And you can refer to the label on the sun visor. For even more in-depth information, check your owner's manual or talk with your authorized Isuzu dealer. Pay attention to the condition of your truck and perform regular maintenance. And your Isuzu truck will provide you and your company with years of efficient, productive transportation.